So Dominic Raab has met his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi at the ASEAN summit in Thailand. Um, and during this, he reiterated the freedoms enshrined in the Sino-British Joint Declaration, which China and Britain signed. Um, for his part, Wang Yi told Xinhua that um, Britain should appropriately handle sensitive questions regarding China. This is just Communist Party speak for we're too thin-skinned thin to take criticism. Um, I think that's really a toxic combination when you have super sensitivity and very thin skin, um, which basically Wang Yi personifies, and totalitarianism. The situation in Hong Kong right now is as critical as it has been over this crisis, and I think that's the right word for the situation. The protests may have gotten smaller. They're now in the hundreds of thousands as opposed to millions. But I think the anger is very determined and very real. And it's very obvious that people do not want to see the encroaching communist totalitarianism, which is the agenda of the CCP. Now, when you see civil servants joining in, how this can just be dismissed as riots when you see civil servants, when you see ordinary people joining in um, to express their dissatisfaction. There is real animosity towards Beijing's agenda going on in Hong Kong right now, and understandably so. This is the first um, that the Johnson administration has commented on this situation since taking up office over just over a week ago. And it's Rab's first big challenge as foreign secretary. Um, of course, time will tell how good a foreign secretary he will be. Um, but I don't think he should be seen as a pushover. I mean, he's known as the Karate Kid because of his background in martial arts. But he is right to speak out. He said that he put this directly to Wang Yi. Um, I personally think Wang Yi personifies everything I personally dislike about the Communist Party. He's arrogant. He's sensitive. Um, I still remember his little tantrum a few years ago he had in Canada um, when a journalist asked him about human rights. This is how the Communist Party operates. When they hear things they don't want to hear, they play the victim. And yet, when they want their way, when they want to instill their control, they are the playground bullies. And bullies only understand one language. I think for a long time now, Western countries have been playing nice with China, we kind of took this attitude, well, if we go for diplomacy, if we go for um, the softly, softly approach, then eventually China will change its ways, there'll be internal reforms. But quite the opposite's happened. In the last 10 years, unfortunately, it's only got more totalitarian. I've personally seen that. I've seen the change from 2013 to 2018, the two times that I was there. and uh, It's definitely got worse. We could see that with what's happening to the weaker people. So I think it's time to take the gloves off when it comes to China. We need to remind them of their obligations. I don't expect them to respect that at all. Um, whether they go for a Tiananmen-style crackdown, that's chilling. There has been video footage emerging purporting to show PLA trips uh, in Hong Kong. People need to be very careful about spreading that sort of thing. As bad as the situation is, and as much as the CCP would be capable of doing that, it wouldn't be responsible to spread fear either. I think if they'd done that again, God forbid, it would be horrendous. But I think the backlash would be even bigger than 1989. It wouldn't just be sanctions. Um, the world is a lot more, uh, you know, there's more media than there was in 1989, there's social media. Um, it would be appalling, but I also think the backlash would be even bigger and that would be justified. I hope it doesn't come to that, but I wouldn't put anything past the CCP. I mean, they may get to the point where they say to the chief executive, you've had your time, now we're going to take direct action. And that's scary. I wouldn't put it past them. Um, if it comes to that, we really, really need to, we need to kick out the Chinese ambassador. We need to really, um, sanctions of course, but, you know, this is a situation that is only escalating. Gone are the days when we're talking about gold, the golden era of Sino-British relations. George Osborne and David Cameron tried that. 
when they were in power. It didn't work. The only language you fully understand is force. Um, so yes, let's look at diplomacy for now, hard diplomacy, but to hell with their sensitivities, to hell with their sensitivities. And I say to that to any Chinese national who is looking at this and thinking, oh, biased Westerner. No, to hell with your sensitivities, to hell with the Chinese Communist Party. Um, you know, those triad thugs that they employed to attack unarmed protesters, including pregnant women on the Hong Kong subway, that shows the Chinese Communist Party's values. They're nothing but a bunch of thugs. And I think we need to take off the gloves. You know, China versus Britain. China is a more powerful country, but China cannot take on all five eyes. No way. Not Britain, America, Canada, New Zealand and Australia at once, plus other countries. The only language bullies understand is force. And that's what we need these arrogant CCP officials to understand. They've made it clear they're not going to respect the Sino-British Joint Declaration. I think it's time to consider kicking.